We'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. I'll write it down, we'll do it live. Sorry. Bucket list, man. I've always wanted to channel my inner Bill O'Reilly, and now I've done it. That's the best way to channel your Bill O'Reilly, by the way. Any other way to channel your inner Bill O'Reilly is probably going to get you in a lot of trouble. So don't do that. But you can you can always do the meltdown on extra. Do it live! Kills at parties. Anyway, I'm Dan Dunn. Welcome to Nightcap Live. Very excited tonight. We have somebody on the show who's actually funny. What I just did there, hmm. this guy is funny. Dan Cummins, comedian Dan Cummins, hosts a bunch of podcasts, bunch of specials. The guy's a, a real talent, and uh, we're very excited to be drinking with him tonight on the show. We're going to be drinking a box, a Flaviar box, that's called the uh, Asia, Asia and Oceana Volume 3 box, and it's got three different whiskeys in it. We got one from Australia, we got one from Taiwan, and we got one from Japan. Three whiskeys. Dan and I are going to get way into those whiskeys. And then, then the inner Bill O'Reilly will come out. Okay. Uh, thank you again for joining us. I want to uh, invite you, as always, to check out my podcast. I host a podcast too. Dan Cummins hosts 73 podcasts. I have one. I think we all know who's the greedy person here, don't we? Uh, my podcast called What We're Drinking with Dan Dunn. It's available everywhere podcast stream. The latest episode features comedy legend Dan Aykroyd. That's right. One of the original not ready for prime time players, Dan Aykroyd. He and I drink Crystal Head Vodka on the podcast. He talks about John Belushi, all kinds of stuff. Lots of fun. Bring the kids. Don't bring the kids. Drink and chill. Don't do that. Uh, what else? The, uh, it's, it's, it's very hot. I've got a towel. Hot here. I live in Venice Beach. California, close enough to the beach where I don't need air conditioning most of the time. Therefore, I don't have air conditioning. But a day like today, let's just say my loins are moist. They're moist. So, I'm sorry. Everybody's hating this. Right? You must be hating this right now. We start with Bill O'Reilly, moist, moin, uh, moist loins. Moist loins. Hold on. Got to connect my lips to my brain. Moist loins. That's what I, that's what I meant to say. Um, I'm sorry. I promise it's only get worse. We do a contest here every week on Nightcap Live. Regular visitors to Nightcap Live know we do a contest where we give stuff out. And the thing we're giving out this week is a Flaviar membership. Flaviar is a club where all the cool kids go. All the cool kids that like adult beverages are joining Flaviar. Trust me on that. I'm a member. Dan Cummins is a member. If he's not a member, he will be by the end of tonight. I'm going to sell him. Because part of my gig is I get 10% commission if I happen to sell the guest on a membership. But you, you could win one for free, right? And, and that means every quarter you're going to get a box from Flaviar, and it's going to contain uh, some, some booze. It's going to then they get special offers. And there's they run all sorts of cool things that to connect people who love uh, responsible drinking and you're going to be part of that group if you win, if you win tonight. And here's how you're going to do it. There's a comments box that way, I think. See it? And I invite you, by the way, in that comments box to send any questions, comments, threat. Don't threat. No threats. Not today. You know, if it was Friday, I can handle a threat. Thursday, week's not over yet. No threats. But comments, questions general observations about life. If you, if you just have something you want to get off your chest, if you want to unload, Dan Cummins and Dan Dunn are here for you. So do that. But also in that comments box is where you enter the contest. And because, as I mentioned, visual aid, to illustrate what I mean about the heat, the question tonight is this. There are a lot of songs, a lot of songs in this world that have the word hot in it. We all know this, a lot of, tons of songs with hot in it, okay? I want you to write in with the three best songs ever with hot in the title, hot in the title. So for instance, you could just go with Hot by Avril Lavigne. But here's where I caution you. It's not the three best songs with hot in the title you think are the three best songs. 
It's the three best songs that myself and Dan Cummins, two middle-aged white guys, think are the best songs with hot in the title. So instead of Avril Lavigne, youngster, you might want to be thinking more like hot for teacher, Van Halen. But because I threw that out there, anybody that uses hot for teacher from Van Halen is getting tossed out. No cheating. So three songs, hot in the title, put them in the comment box, send them off, fire them off to me. And at the end of the show, Dan and I will go through these entries and we will choose a winner. And here's what I want you to focus on. There's going to be one winner of the Flaviar membership. But know this, the rest of you are losers. All right. So, uh, Dad, what's going on tonight? Why am I so angry? I don't know. I don't know. Bill O'Reilly, I'm talking about my loins. I'm, I'm calling our viewers lo losers. You know I don't mean that. Maybe I just need a drink. Okay. I'm better now. I'm better. Uh, our guest tonight, and uh, I'm, again, couldn't be more excited. I love funny people. And this guy is a funny person. He's got a special out right out of it now called Dan Cummins, Get Out of Here, Devil. The audio is available anywhere you get audio. The visuals are available on Amazon and everywhere except, I don't know, maybe not HBO. The snobs. Dan doesn't want to be on HBO. By the way, right now he's going, yeah. <laughs> uh, he hosts a numerous podcasts. Uh, I mean, a lot of podcasts. His main podcast is called Time Suck. Time Suck. And there's a bad joke in there later coming after I've had more whiskey. Uh, Time Suck, Scared to Death, Secret Suck, Is We Dumb? These are just some of the podcasts that Dan Cummins hosts. And he also does stand up as I mentioned, and let's roll a thing. Can we roll this clip of Dan doing some stand-up right now, please? The weirdest one to me, I've been talking about it a few years, and it's a growing movement, is the Lizard Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I joke around about it a lot, but it, is, but it is crazy when you really think about it. There are adults out there, stressed out, because they're worried about reptilians from space who live in tunnels beneath us, who mate with our political leaders and create these... <laughs> Weird bloodlines, you control our thoughts from the moon matrix. Like, there's somebody in a cubicle right now going, God damn lizards. <laughs> I'm sick of it. <laughs> when I first found out about it, I thought it was a joke. And when I watched the videos, I was laughing. And then I read the comments underneath, and I thought it would just be comment after comment of stuff like, get the fuck out of here, it's crazy. No, comment after comment of like, thank you for being brave enough to speak the truth. <laughs> Hashtag woke as fuck. What? That's a real belief. That's what amazed me about the internet. No matter how crazy the video is, there are believers in the comment section, no matter how extreme. You know, just some guy ran, just like, I'm sick of the Rothschilds taking their blood, pedophile money, and using it for their Agenda 21 extermination program, okay? It's Bohemian Grove. They meet about it every year. They have the rituals. It's on tape. Okay, listen, the Bilderbergers, just look at, look, the pizzas are there. Wake up, sheeple. It's the Freemasons working with the Knights Templar, Priory of Sion. Connect the dots, okay? Mona Lisa, do the math. The Greys. Area 51, they coordinate everything. All roads lead to the Denver airport! <laughs> there he is. Dan, how are you, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. This is like, this is like the Dan show. Dan Dunn, Dan Aykroyd, me. Dan. Dan. Although we didn't fully coordinate, we got the names right, but what happened to the beard, man? Where'd it come? You know what? I decided to do a summer stash, and uh, I, I prepared myself for the ridicule, and it, and it did come. It did come. My my kids, not not big fans of the stash. Um, I expected to have more chin hiding under my beard. In, in my mind, I had built up like a George Clooney-type jaw, and then it turns out I have my mom's chin instead. But that's okay. I, I can grow back. I, I think it looks. I think it looks dashing, man. You look like a. You look like a a, a, a '60s ad man there. You Thank know? you. Thank you. Because I, I get. I get that I look like uh, Ned Flanders, who did some hard time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do got a little Flanders thing going on. So, where, Dan, where are you? Where are you this evening? Where are you coming to us from? I am in uh, my recording little studio here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So I'm up uh, northwest, way up north. Is that you're from Idaho originally? 
Yeah, I grew up in central Idaho, a little tiny town called Riggins, 400 people. And then I went uh, I went to college in Spokane, which is only about three hours. Well, it's a half an hour from where I am now, only about three hours from where I grew up. And then went to L.A. for a while. And then some family stuff brought me back up in the northwest and, yeah, brought me to Coeur d'Alene. So how did uh, how did your comedy career begin? Was it here in L.A. or was it doing it in Idaho? Uh, I was doing it in Spokane. I went to Gonzaga. And then a year after I graduated, there was a comedy club I didn't even know about. I, I, I didn't really follow stand-up that closely, but I'd done some sketch comedy in school. And um, my now ex-wife, we were engaged at the time, and she found out about the comedy club. And she's like, well, why don't you just try it? I was, I was doing kind of social work, and then I worked at a gym for a little bit. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I just did an open mic completely randomly and had enough fun to come back. And then had enough fun to come back again, and then it just slowly led to uh, to a career in stand-up. But it but it wasn't a big like planned out thing. I wasn't watching the Tonight Show as a kid, going, ah, I got I got to get on there. It just um just kind of so kind of It's kind of like your, it sounds like your ex-wife kind of nudged you in that direction. Yeah, yeah, I um yeah, I I wouldn't have if she hadn't have found the club, I I would have never tried it out and would would not be doing any of this now. So I'm I'm yeah, I'm glad it worked out. Okay. Um, I, know, I wish I had like that. Some comics have a great story. They're like, ah, oh, I was watching the Tonight Show and I saw this guy and I was like, that's what I want to do. I am. Um, I wanted to be a musician, but I am not great at guitar. And then I wanted which to be. Which is a hindrance, by the way. It it hurts you. You want to be a musician, having an ability to play. Mm -hmm. is and have limited range. I have limited vocal range and not good at playing an instrument. And uh, do not have perfect pitch. There's there's a variety of problems. There's a variety of problems. You got to know, you got to pick your lane, you know, like exactly. Stevie Wonder may have wanted to be a race car driver. Not right. going to happen. Right. You could play the music. You could not play the music, but you could do the comedy. So there you, you know, go. It was a thing very pragmatic like that, actually, where um, I did think about, like, what do I want to do? And... I was never like the big up in front of everyone able to like, you know, trying to make the whole cl class laugh like a traditional class clown. I was more of the sitting in the back of the room, smart ass, whispering absurd stuff to my friends and making them laugh. But making like the little group around me laugh always kind of came easy to me. So I just thought like, well, what if I what if I try that? Maybe that's what I'm kind of best at. And if I work hard enough, hopefully I can make a living. So this is a story that I've heard a lot from comic friends and people like this. There's a big difference between Spokane and Los Angeles. Yeah. So when you get to Los Angeles, do you get is that moment when you go, oh, there's a lot of funny people. Or how did it go for you when you got here? I, you know, I did, but I, but I had a very untraditional route. And uh, before I went to L.A., I'd already done a hour long Comedy Central special and a half hour Comedy Central special, and I I had done late night. I had been to the festival. So I, I did that all in the first seven years out of Spokane. And so I was met with more of like a, how the hell did you skip coming here to do all that? And then, and then I kind of had, I had a weird entry into LA where usually people who start off in LA or whatever, they kind of come up in a class of comics. So they all do the open mics together and they, and they network and they, and they grind it out and then they start getting breaks and then they, you know, uh, help each other out in this next kind of stage or whatever. But I was like in this weird little island where I didn't make the same connections because I wasn't part of the scene. It was kind of like uh, just me <laughs> in the Spokane area and then some other people that were doing a little bit locally. And so I did have a little wake up call where I thought I would go to L.A. and be like, hey, I've already done all this stuff. Give me all this great stage time. And I forgot about like the Chris Rocks and like the really big comics. And that there was a lot of other people who had done specials too, and that the and who, who were actors and stuff. And so I thought I was going to be like, hey, I've, I've I've already reached this level, and so I should just you know be given a prime spot at the comedy store. And they were like, nope, you still have to start at the back of the line here, no matter all that stuff. So it it was a wake up call coming to L.A. Uh, I knew there was a lot of other comics, but I didn't know no until I started to go around L.A. and just like, oh, my God, there's like a million comics in this city. Well, what's funny for those of you out there who've never been to the comedy store in L.A., you go in the comedy store, there's somebody comes and they take you to your seat, another guy working the door and he's doing this. And then then you're sitting there. And next thing you know, the guy that took you to your seat yeah. is on stage doing a set because that's how yeah. it works there. They 
yeah. they take the young comics and they got to work, man. They, they tend yeah. bar, they're doing this, they're out front, they're working the door, and then they get five minutes on stage. And that's, that's the attrition that has to go on. And I was wondering when you said that you, you, you sort of skipped that one step, do you ever get pushback? Because I know it's such a, it's such a insular, clicky world. So I, I always think yeah. about the, uh, like the comedy cellar, you know, in New sure. York City, where you got to be invited to sit at the table, you know. Yeah. The, and there is that weird sort of, um, not weird, but I mean, there's a there's a sense that you've got to pay your dues. Yeah. With with comedians, and if they feel like you haven't properly paid your dues you might get the shit kicked out you're not literally but sure they can be they can be a harsh bunch yeah yeah i mean they definitely can and um and i definitely pushed back against that culture which which definitely hurt me for a while because uh i have this thing of like i got into it to be funny and have fun and i just care about like do i like what i'm doing and, and does the audience like what i'm doing or my or hopefully eventually you know, when you start off you want fans but I didn't care as much about peers as some comics did. And where some comics would go to like the cellar or the um, you know, Melrose Improv or the Laugh Factory or the comedy store, or whatever, and be like, oh man, I really gotta break into that uh, little circle. I definitely had more of an attitude of like, fuck you guys, you guys were nerds in high school and now you think you're super cool and I gotta like kiss the ring. I'm like, nope. And one of my favorite moments was uh, you know, because of the podcast, you know. I've, and, and just doing stand up and, and putting a lot of albums out there and getting a little bit of love from Pandora in some places, I, I do have like a niche following. And so what I loved is the last time I did the comedy store, we had a little sold out show where I just showed up, did my show for my fans and left. And I know that some of the LA comics were looking at that being like, who the fuck? How did he do that? This son of a bitch, he never paid any dues here. He never, he never auditioned, he never did this. Cause, Cause comedy can be weird where you get all these little clicks where they, what they really care about is being a, a regular at the seller, or they, they want to be a regular at the store. They want to get their name on the wall. I never cared about that. Like I just wanted, for me, the game was, I want enough fans around the country where I can do what kind of comedy, whatever kind I want and perform in front of fans. And I don't really care what the venue is. So like, you know, like I've never even been to the seller to like show. You don't, admit, like, you don't, admit, you don't, uh, there's not a part of you that thinks it'd be kind of cool. Cause I got to say, I, I find that where I have a, several friends that are, especially in the New York comedy. Well, I have some here in L.A. too, but I have friends in the New York comedy scene, for instance. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's kind of that whole, uh, you know, the big Jay Okerson, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Joe DeRosa, Jay Justin, so all those guys. You Dan sure. Soder. Yeah. And it feels like a really cool club, you know? Yeah, yeah, Ari yeah. Ari Shafir. Okay. And, and, and so I... I, I you know, like I go back there and I get and I hang with those guys sometimes. Sure. But you don't you don't miss you don't mind not being part of some big clique of comedians. No, I got I got kids. You know, I got like uh, my family that I enjoy spending. I mean, honestly, it's like I, there's a lot of comics that I like. I have friends who are comics, but the the hangout in the comedy club scene to me is such a huge groundhog's day where it's like, when I just work in the road, it's like the same conversations as like, why is so-and-so getting the spots and I'm not, and did you hear so-and-so? It's, it's, I find it to generally be a pretty bitter, angry bunch. And they're, yeah, mad, yeah. And, and, they're mad, and they're mad about this person getting that and this they person- They cannot be happy. They, they, they are, yeah. they are uh, incapable of being happy right. for someone else having success. And I yeah. think every, there, there's a, it was a show on Showtime. You're, I'm dying up here or something. Yeah, and was, yeah, yeah. And there were some scenes of that where they're like, "Hey, Joe got the Tonight Show," and they're all like, "Fuck," you know, yep. like, screw uh, yeah, him. so true. Tonight Show. Oh, but we're happy for him. But screw him, you know. And, yep. Uh, yep. Well, hey, no, by the way, I want to tell everybody out there: if you have any questions for Dan, you want to talk about comedy, you want to talk about, go in the comments box, send them off. We're happy to answer. Dan will answer any question you have. Any question you have for me about? Not comedy, but uh, my Bill O'Reilly impersonation or the whiskey we're about to drink. And I and I think this is probably a good time to start diving in, Daniel. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start tonight with uh, Starward, okay? Starward is uh, a whiskey from Melbourne, Australia. And Ooh. what makes this whiskey unique, besides the fact that it's from Australia and you're not getting a lot of Australian whiskey, certainly not in the United States, is that they 
they, and this is a new brand, it's been around only since 2016, they age it in wine barrels, in wine casks, red wine casks specifically. So probably being in Melbourne, you're probably going to get a lot of Syrah, Pinot Noir, and Cabernet Sauvignon is what they're aging these spirits in. So let's, uh, you got a glass, you got your. Yeah, I'm. I'm All right, I'm, so I'm, yeah, we're going to pour some in there. Get it in. Now, how, where would you say you are on, what is, how much experience do you have with whiskey tastings and whatnot? You know, n- none with tastings. I, I drink, uh, uh, I don't know, two, three little nightcaps a night usually. It'd be either whiskey or gin-based. But it's, okay. it's, it's usually like a gin and tonic. It's usually like, a, you know, whiskey ginger. Sometimes I'll do it on the rocks. But um, so, I yeah, this is the, I'm excited about this because I, I'm not good at this. So what we're going to do first is we'll take a look at it, right? Just hold it up, take a look at it. I mean, this has got a nice reddish hue to it. The color... The color in any spirit is, well, they can do coloring. They don't do coloring, I don't think, in this one. But the coloring is coming from the barrel, the wood. So why you're getting that reddish hue there, obviously, is, as again, as we mentioned, it, this was aged in wine barrels. Those wine yeah. barrels were soaked through with that Syrah. And that kind of, so that color, and that it's, it's coming in here, right? So now the next thing we want to do is maybe agitate it a little bit, you know, get a little swirl, agitate. What's and now that we're going to nose it. What's that? What what does agitating it do? Well, just the, so in a wine glass, you'd say swirl it, but honestly, yeah. it's just agitate. What that's doing is it's it's getting all those vapors basically coming out of the out of the spirit. And then once you do that, you want to do is don't put your nose all the way in that glass. Okay. You want to you want to breathe it in with your mouth slightly open and your nose, because if you ram your nose in there, what happens is the alcohol content is like a blast to your nose you know okay. it's okay. like it's like jumping in a really cold pool right you're you can't enjoy it because your testicles just shot out your ears right so smelling the alcohol and blasting it up your nose is gonna that's it you're not gonna get anything else so you want to kind of hold it out here nose okay. open mouth open slightly and then and breathe that in right now to me right up front I get something, but I want to hear what do you, what do you, what's the first thing you're getting? And there's no, nothing wrong here. There's no wrong answer. Man, I, I, I should have said earlier, I'm the worst. I have a, I have a, <laughs> I have a limited sense of smell. I had a, I had a, okay. I had a cheekbone. Well, that's fr- that mustache is blocking your nostrils. <laughs> yeah. I, I messed my face up at one point, but gosh, I mean, I, I can't think of the word for it. I mean, it has a very distinct odor. Can I, but- can I throw out this? The first thing I got was dried fruit. The <sighs> first thing that jumped out, dried, like dried tropical fruit. Oh, you have okay. a better sense of smell than me. And then I'm getting, and then I'm getting sort of this, I am getting the wine nose, to be honest with you. Like this, in, in, a, in a little way, it's kind of like nosing a wine here. So, okay, so now we got that. There's like a, you get that spicy sweet dance kind of going on here. Okay, so yeah. now we'll take a sip. And what I what I always tell people is take a tiny little bit, do this, coat your palate, okay. prime okay. your palate, and then you take a bigger sip. So just do, okay. hmm, get it in there. Get it around your mouth. Get Now you're ready, right? You, st- you get a little bit, your mouth's watering a little bit. Now you're ready. Now take a now take a little bit more significant sip. Mm. Mm. And with whiskey, seriously, just get it in. Get it all. You want it all over your mouth, right? And mm-hmm. again, I'm getting the red fruit is there, uh, some oakiness to it, and that's definitely coming from the wine barrels. What do you what do you I mean, and the thing that just jumps out at me is just how smooth it is, like with a quality whiskey, where I, I think about uh, back in my dirtbag college, very poor days when I was selling blood plasma for um, drink money. Yeah. <laughs> I distinctly still remember like what, like the Monarch bottom shelf plastic jug whiskey that just burns your mouth off. It just, it just feels like fire. In other words, and I'm amazed, like I'm not usually a, a neat drinker, but it it's so smooth. There's no burning. Like it's warm going down, but yeah. but but no real heat for me. It, yeah, I'm yeah. It's remarkably smooth to me. 
Well, what what's what I find is really amazing about about this, and we're not amazing about it, but what's interesting about it is the heat. Okay, the heat in Melbourne accelerates the aging process. Okay, you're not getting the cool cold that you're going to get in Kentucky with bourbon or Scotland with scotch. It's always hot. Okay, so what that's doing is it's the wood is expanding more and it, it's and it's extracting more and more quickly from the wood. This is what happens. And you're going to see that certainly in the in the, the Taiwanese whiskey that we're having as well. The 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 age process is accelerated because of the heat, as is the evaporation, which they call the angel share. You know, the part that, huh. that yeah, they, they, that's they call the angel share, the part that evaporates. And you're yeah. going to get more of that when you're going to get a hot climate whiskey such as this. But you're absolutely right, Dan, on the on the drinkability on this one. Damn. I've uh, I've written about this one for the Rob Report, which is, you know, sort of the Bible of the Illuminati here in the States. And got a lot of feedback from them. People really enjoyed this whiskey. So it's, it's yeah. you know, and it's a... Uh, to me, it's a great one. It's a, it, it really is. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a really good flavor. Yeah, and I'm somebody, uh, again, who like, I, I I generally like, like if I'm not going to have a anything mixed into my whiskey, I always like it on ice. I, I just like the temperature. Uh, I like the flavor somehow that, that, that has changed because of that. And um, usually when I try whiskey neat, even if it's highly recommended, it's just, it's just kind of okay. I'm like, oh, that's okay. But I would rather not drink it that way. This is really good, just room temp just with nothing else. We have a uh, comment or question here from Lori in Colorado. She wants to know, Dan, did you ever consider putting a little makeup on the chin to to make it seem more prominent? <laughs> that is hilarious. No, that I should. I should just get some kind of, I don't even know what the makeup things would call, just to fade in or give like a really hard line. Yeah, yeah, and then maybe, and then maybe under here, I don't know what's been going on under here the last couple of years. Maybe just kind of fade that in so it looks nice and like a lot tighter, you know? Right, yeah. Wasn't mm -hmm. it amazing the things we got to do as we get older? Because I, I find myself like I'll do, you know, in the hair thing the situation. Yeah. Yeah. The first few months enough. of this, I was just doing myself, right? I just do the hair yeah. myself, and then I then they opened it up briefly, so I got a haircut. Yeah. But like I found little tiny things that I never would have thought of when i was young so yeah. i'll go all right i'm getting older your head gets bigger i don't know if people <laughs> get this when you get older your head just gets bigger yeah. i was watching uh Ad Ad alec baldwin did an inst he does these instagram lives all the time yeah i was watching alec baldwin and i'm like and he's still a good looking guy is alec baldwin but alec baldwin was one of the best looking men in the world right yeah, yeah i'm yeah. watching him and i'm going his head seems bigger and I think with some people, when you get older, your like body, skin, what like I think happens with certain bro. people is your body catches up. So yeah. your head doesn't look as big because when we're young, our bodies are smaller. We're, we're in shape, we're this. And then you get older and your body gets bigger and then suddenly your head goes, oh yeah. Then So what I've found now as I've gotten older is I'm like, all right, so what I got to do is I got to just get my hair cropped really tight. Okay. So that it makes my head, because if, if my hair goes out like this, then my head just, the whole head expands. That's funny. Yeah, like I, I've, a, yeah, I've always had a big head. I've always had like the big hats, but I think it's been it's, it has been growing more. I, I'm amazed of how the hair changes. Where I, I just didn't think I would have to pay this much attention to my ears, and my eyebrows, and my yeah. nose. It's like a almost a daily thing now. And if I miss a week, I'll, I'll just have I'll have like a hair a good two inches long coming off like the top of my ear. I'm like, why? Why, what evolutionary process thought that was a good idea? <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's, the world messes with you, man. Yeah, I, uh, you know, and then the hair coming out, you know, the hair out of the ears is a, yep. uh, is a tragedy. Uh, yep. and, and also, when you start, you know, gray hair is traumatic any way you put it. But when a lot you of really start, hair. Yeah. Yeah, I get them, I get, I get them everywhere. And then, but then when I first, when I got my first gray chest hair, Oh, no. Oh, man. See, look. Great. Yeah. Great chest. Okay. Okay. The couple in there. Yeah. They're okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
And I don't know what that means. I don't know if that I don't know if the ladies find that attractive. You know what kind of I think it's all dark still. No, see, definitely like, more fat. Definitely yeah, more fat. See that? See that gray chest there right there? I know yeah. still. <laughs> right. Just two guys drinking whiskey together. Looking at our chest there. I, you know, I'm Isn't finding it, it is interesting. Like I'm uh I got really bummed when for a long time, like I, I would lift more weights or go to the gym more and you know, try and get stronger. And I, and I and I always thought like my stronger years were ahead of me. And it was depressing for me when it started to go the other way. And I'm like, sure, sure yeah, I could take supplements maybe and 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 get and get back there. But then just recently, i'm I'm reaching this new factor of just not caring. You know, like 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 ten years ago, I'd be a little bit more worried about my gut. Not that I still wouldn't want to trim it up a little bit, but I have more days of just like, yeah, I don't care. Or like, you know, I'd be so worried about my hair. Maybe, what, oh my God, is it thinning? And now I'm just like, nah, I don't care. It's, right. it's kind of, so I never I, have to worry about my hair thinning. I have very thick hair. It grows like crazy. Hair. But I will say this about the aging and, and, and losing the weight. So earlier this year, pre-COVID, I had my first colonoscopy. Because let's okay. just go gross. I've already talked about my sure. voice loins. So I had my first colonoscopy and I heard nightmare stories about the colonoscopy. People go, oh, it's terrible. I loved it. I okay. loved it. The whole experience of the colonoscopy, because first of all, they, have you had one? I've had the fingers in my butt, oh, but no, like, no, 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 no. I haven't had the little camera. That's, that's, yeah, no, no. Colonoscopy. So you got to take this stuff, colite, the day before. you, you dra And basically what it does mm -hmm. is it just cleans you out. And I mean, you learn what it's like to take a pee out of your ass. And by <laughs> the end, and by yeah. the end, it's yeah. clear. Like, it's crazy. Ow. It's like water coming out of your butt, right? It's crazy. Sorry, everybody. But it's it. But the thing was, it made me feel so light. And I was Ooh. like, great. And then I yeah. went to the hospital, get my colonoscopy. My nurse was super attractive, added bonus. She was very sweet, prepped me. Yeah. I go in, you lay on your side. They go, the anesthesiologist says, here we go. We're countdown 10 up. I'm out. Boom. Okay. Next thing I know, I'm in the room, the recovery room, doctor comes in and I'm just feeling lying, you know, and he says, hey, not, not a single polyp, you're in great shape. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic news. Oh, I didn't say it like that because I was still, I was like, oh, great news. And he sure. said, so we won't see it for 10 more years. And I was like, really? No, Wait, you I want to keep doing, I want to do this again. So what I'm getting at is I dropped like six pounds from the uh -huh. colonoscopy, right? Because everything, and I just kept it off. That's it, great. I had this happen literally when COVID started. Like it was like COVID last week, COVID started a couple of days later, we got shut down, and I kept the weight off. Yeah. So weight loss tip out there, just get a colonoscopy. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta poop some pee to get uh to, to get my weight down, man. It's peeing out of your ass, Dan. It's it's great. Now we got comments coming in, and they're all like, "Oh, you're gross." No, uh, Constantine pick. Constantine says. Pick your head up. You did. Me? That'll give you a nice chin action. Ooh, okay. So now I gotta I gotta change the way I approach people. Let's sit like right. this. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh. This feels oh, super right. natural. Okay. I just push it out and keep my head up. And then I'll just talk like this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Mm. All right, feels interesting. Right. Oh, what do you say? By the way, I think we look more like whiskey drinkers. Oh Dan. <laughs> so the boys down at the Rotary Club are telling me. All right, we got uh, Sandy Abrams. What are we in for when you guys get to the third whiskey? Oh, oh who knows? Oh boy. Do well. I I can I guess Sandy. The question could be answered. Do either of us have gray testicle hair? We'll see. I could find happen. out. I'm just saying. Could be a big surprise. Speaking of when we get to the end. Everybody, again, I want to remind you, we're giving away a Flaviar membership. In order to win it, in the comments section, write down your three best songs that begin with the word, that have the word hot in it. Not begin, but have the word hot in the title. Three best songs that Dan and I, two middle-aged white guys, will vote on. We mm -hmm. will pick the winner. Very scientific process of us going, this one? Yeah, all right, sure. Scientific process. Three best songs with hot in it. And if we pick you... You will be a Flaviar member. Uh, what else? We got, um, oh boy, Nikki Blandis, Blandis says, oh my God, it's just getting worse. 
It must be the heat in L.A. The heat's getting to him. Let's move on. Nikki, I couldn't agree with you more. The heat is getting to me, and we should move on to the next whiskey. The next whiskey is the Omar. Okay. You got okay. this one, Dan B. Got it. I'm ready. So I'm ready. Omar is, a, is from Taiwan, okay? And it's a single malt whiskey from Taiwan. So let's get it into our glass. Now, listen, when it comes to whiskey from Taiwan, the, there's one called Kavalon, which is the single most famous whiskey from Kavalon. Wins tons of awards. Super expensive. But that opened the door for more to come in. And then that's what you're getting now. And you get this Omar, okay? So what's going on with Omar is they're importing the bar, they're importing the starch, which is barley, from Scotland. They're not going to say who they're getting it from. They say it's non-disclosures, but they're getting it from a place that sources a lot of barley from, from that a lot of the Scottish uh, um, producers use as well. So they bring the barley in from Scotland. And then they ferment it and distill it and age it in their facility, which is called the Nan Tu Distillery in Taiwan. So now when he knows this, Dan, you're just going to get a completely different, I mean, it's a different style of whiskey, obviously. Yeah. Okay. What are you getting there, man? I mean, it definitely is, is more powerful. This, this definitely is like, oh, okay, okay. Well, on the nose, I'm getting some toffee, some cinnamon. It's Oh yeah, I can actually yeah yeah the yeah the toffee, bam, this one has a little more fire, a little more heat. It does. Now I, on the on the flavor, what's crazy to me, and I don't know if it's because I'm just thinking about the weight I lost with the colonoscopy and that I need to put some weight on or something. But last week on the show, we were tasting rum, and one of the notes that jumped out at me was the dessert bananas Foster. Yeah, I'm getting that again. I'm getting that again with this. I'm getting this, but I'm getting like a some toffee and chocolate. What's that candy? There's a candy bar that's toffee and chocolate. I don't even know what. Oh, uh, oh man, I'm getting that. I'm getting desserts. This is like dessert to me. It's not. That's not the hundred grand bar, is it? I don't do a lot of toffee. Oh wait, do you think they ever think about renaming the hundred grand relation? Like, should we make it a million now? Hundred right, grand's really not that impressive anymore. With inflation, yeah, they should kick it up. Yeah, like we should, should we up it? Should we up it up to the, you know, even a million? Really not the million dollar bar. I'd be like, hmm. Mm. So okay, so they they import this and then they age this in bourbon casks. Okay. Okay. So as we know, we, bourbon casks can only be used once to make bourbon. In the United States, which is the only place you can make bourbon, new white American oak charred, mm. they can only use it one time to make bourbon. They ship those barrels all over the world. They're aging. They're aging everything in bourbon barrels. Scotch, Taiwanese whiskey, rum, everything. So this this whiskey from Taiwan, which is made from barley from Scotland, is, are you keeping up here, Dan? Yeah, I'm yeah. But this is aged in bourbon barrels. So that's where I think I'm getting that chocolate. The chocolate note, I get a lot from spirits that are aged in bourbon barrels, although not necessarily bourbon. I think it happens after the fact. After those barrels have soaked in bourbon and they ship them off to age something else, that's where that chocolate note comes out. I feel, I feel like this one, is it is it bad for him to put a little ice in this? I want to taste this one with some ice. Absolutely not. And in fact, if you even the ice, or if you just put a little water, I'll pour a little water in here. And what just that does, up. just a drop or a couple of drops of water, it, it takes the sting off the alcohol, right? takes a little bit of that alcohol, it, it mitigates the alcohol. And what that does is, is it allows you to yeah. maybe pick up notes, uh, aromas, and also flavors that you might not have identified before because the alcohol was overpowering you a little bit. Yeah, you know, definitely. That, that's crazy. I never noticed that before with whiskey. But this one, like when I first smelled it, it was very powerful to me, just alcohol smell. Like uh, much more so than the first one we tried. And then when I put the ice in it, sloshed it around for about five seconds, now I can that barely yeah, that does it. And, I and this is we're talking about. This is forty six percent alcohol. So it's ninety two proof. So that's not you know that's that's it. That's a, got a nice kick to it, alcohol wise. I I really like this one on the rocks. Yeah, I really like how that changes the flavor. That's smooth. Yeah, that's that's really yeah yeah. Uh oh, 
All right, let's go. We got Stephen Friedenthal. You should talk about what mixed drinks these go well with. I've lately been exploring and discovering whiskey cocktails. All right, Stephen. Challenge accepted. Uh, well, okay, so we're going to be doing a Japanese whiskey, which I think a Japanese highball is the simplest thing to do, you know. Now with scotch, or well, <laughs> saying scotch, it's a Taiwanese whiskey, but to me, it's it's got a lot of the qualities of scotch. So there's all sorts of, you know, you could do a penicillin with that. Any here's the thing about whiskey, the beauty of it is it's kind of interchangeable in a lot of cocktails. Okay, so we could we could do the first one. What was the first one that we had? Uh, Help me out here, Dan. I'm uh, losing Perk, my mind. The Australian? The, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the Australian the whiskey. So you can even take that star word, any of those whiskeys. So whiskey is the category. And then we got all the tentacles that come out. You got bourbon, scotch, you know, Taiwan, Japan, here. And you can try those whiskeys so you don't have to make an old-fashioned with bourbon or rye, right? You can make it with one of these whiskeys. You can do a Manhattan with one of these whiskeys. You can do a Negroni with one of these whiskeys, a variation on it. it. You know, those spirits are all sort of falling in the same. Now, you're not going to do a margarita with this, right? It's not going to taste good. You're not going to put lime juice in the whiskey. For, 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 you're not going to do that. Margarita is not going to do well with these, but your traditional aromatic spirits, okay? And, uh, and you got, you know, you got sours and aromatic. With a traditional aromatic spirit, you can you can mix and match whiskeys and try them out. So, yeah. What's a penicillin? I, I'm not familiar with that drink. Penicillin is scotch, lemon, honey, and then with a float of whiskey on top of it. Yeah. Huh. So huh. A bl generally a blended scotch, right, with lemon juice, some honey, and then you do a, a whiskey float on top. Penicillin, very famous cocktail, right? Delicious. Okay, try that. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? We got uh, Sandy Abrams said. Okay. Sorry, my <laughs> phone is talking to me. Are you Sandy now? I thought you were Siri. Sandy, very close to Siri. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Sandy. I'll say it more quietly. My phone's getting upset, Sandy. Sorry, Sandy. Abrams. <laughs> uh, is the Laugh Stop still open in Newport Beach? Oh, that's for you, Dan. Is the Laugh Stop? Have you ever been in the Laugh Stop in Newport Beach? In Newport Beach, California, uh, no, the last time I was kind of close. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of like the comedy and magic in that general area. Down and there, then, which Jay Leno performs that all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then if you go further down to like Hermosa, you got the rec room and then you got like the, or, I, I don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's really hard to, to tell what's open right now. I actually just postponed my tour and I'm not going to tour till 2021. And part of the, the reason is because Something that's open this week may not be open next week. And there might be open like you don't want to make all the arrangements and all that shit. And then I've heard about guys getting stuck. They get stuck across the country because oh, you know, yeah. you know, when you're touring, let's say you fly out somewhere, you you you're fine, you do a show, that goes okay. But you know, if you do happen to get it and they do the temperature check when you're coming back to, to try and fly home, now you're stuck clear across the country for two weeks. I heard some horror stories where this one comic had to go to the ER and then he, then he felt okay after that, but now his because he tested positive, his hotel <laughs> made him check out. So now he doesn't have a room, and then he goes to fly home, and the airlines won't take him to fly home because he tested positive. He ended up having to rent a private flight just to get back home. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, Sandy, I don't know if the know. left stop is open. I don't if know only I there were some invention that could tell us this. Uh, there was a way. Al Gore, where are you when we need you? Oh, someone would just invent something that you could type in. <laughs> Is the last stop in Newport Beach? Uh, of oh, only it could. Come on, Let tell me. Let me try it again. Let me see if it'll answer me. Sandy, Sandy. See now, Siri is oh, the fickle. Oh, she was in when she wants to. You've been cheating um, on her, Brian. Berdine said back to the whiskey. I didn't realize Brian Berdine was directing Ooh. the show all of a sudden. All right, Brian. Right, right. All right, we're back. Yeah. Do you have a favorite to date? Well, I once went on a date with a Maker's Mark, and oh, was she the best. Oh, 
to date. No, I'm only dating women at this point, Brian. Uh, yeah, but you, Dan, are you dating any whiskeys these days? I am not dating any whiskeys. Hmm. Brian, I think when you start dating whiskey, there's a program for you. Yeah, they got a program for you. It's 12 steps. And you're not walking down the aisle. There's 12 steps. When, you, when you're dating whiskey, so Brian, come on. Date human beings. Owen Altry says, oh, this is wrong. There's somebody, Keith, our director, is now throwing the contest entries into the comment thing. Looks like Keith's been hitting the whiskey. Looks like he's been hitting the whiskey. Oh, boy. Sorry, Dan. Things start to fall apart here. It's okay. It's okay. okay. So do you want to jump on to the next whiskey? Yeah, let's hit C. We're going to... C, which is the Fukano 10-year-old. This is a Japanese whiskey. Now, I'm going to tell you some things about this. Okay. And say it's a Japanese whiskey. There are people that are going to say this isn't a Japanese whiskey because it's made with rice. Okay. Okay. So in Japan, they, they this is a Fukano is a soju manufacturer. You know soju, which is Japanese. It's a, it's a rice. It's like sake in a way. So it's okay. technically in the states, it's categorized as a wine. So they can serve it. In sushi places, for instance, that don't have liquor licenses, you know, you got your beer and wine. Soju is below that 24% alcohol. So, okay, so Fukano makes soju. That's what they're famous for. They started making whiskey out of rice, which by the definition in the United States, rice is a starch. And that's what you have to, you have to make whiskey out of a starch. Could be potato, could be wheat, could be rye, could be barley, could be this. Corn. Okay. Obviously, for bourbon. So in Japan, this is not categorized as whiskey in Japan, but in the States, it is. So what is, me, it, what is it categorized as in Japan? Soju. Soju, okay. Yeah, so, uh, but to me, I say this is Japanese whiskey. In fact, it's a Japanese company, family-owned company. They've been, it's everything in here is Japanese made, all of the ingredients. So it is. Again, by definition in the States, the, the, the fermented mash is grain, so it, it can qualify as whiskey. But I'm just saying there's going to be people out there that are going to get hung up on that and say it's not whiskey. But my counter with that would be it is, and it's, and it's a localized form of whiskey. So enjoy it. Okay. Quit getting hung up. Details. Yeah, so, Brian, yeah Brian, wasn't that, that one guy's name? Yeah. Want us to move Back it forward. Easy, whiskey. Brian. Yeah, he's telling us how to do this. So this this distillery has been around since 1823. Okay, the Fukano distillery. Again, soju's been what they're making, but that's their core line. But here we go. So the nose on that, Dan, what are you getting? I you know what? This is I this is um I would be the worst. <laughs> What what is a sommelier or whatever however you say it, like a wine kind of like like if if my job was to tell people like what kind of notes and things I got I'm like, all right smells so, like whiskey oh. again smells like whiskey. Uh, you're like fuck it it smells I like just smell I, alcohol. Drink. I just smell the alcohol I'm getting the citrus I'm getting a little sandalwood on it mm. uh, I'm getting very different flavor man there's a uh, there's a little bit of a yeah, it's like apricots. Plum. I'm getting some plum in there. Now, let's try. Let's try to drink it and see what we get. Okay. So to me, it, this has definitely has the Japanese whiskey characteristics to it, which is there's. It's very smooth, silky. I mentioned plum on the nose. I'm definitely getting plum in the on the palate, which is something you're almost always going to get in a good I Japanese whiskey. I smell butterscotch so strongly. Like once once I put some ice in there to kill the alcohol smell for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I get a little marmalade too, like a little orange marmalade situation. I, I'm blown away how much that changes the flavor and the smell just by like five seconds of ice. Just the difference between neat 
I, I had never messed around with it that quickly. You know, I, I either started off on the rocks or just drank it neat, but never went from one to the other in, in, in the same glass. That changes the flavor substantially. That's that's a. It does. Pretty- I mean, again, that that water is gonna. That water is obviously just like just like adding a mixer. You know. Yeah. You take a vodka and you go, oh, that vodka is good. Now let's pour some cranberry juice in there. Now it's a different. Ju- it's a different thing. It's a, it's similar with whiskey. But you've got a compound that's already got a lot going on. You've got the wood influence. You got all this going on there. Now let's 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 add something far into it. So let's add yeah. some water. It it goes. It smooths it out. Now yeah. if you put too much water in there, then you're just drinking whiskey water. But yeah. You put a little bit of water, or you put it on ice. Now I would recommend to people out there. The steps would be: I would go neat. Try it neat. Mm. Try it with a couple yeah. drops of water, okay, and mm-hmm. then do that. Then take it. Then don't put ice in the one that you already put water in. Now, now you have just pour mm-hmm. a little bit more. Put a cube in there. Let it sit for a little bit, and then get what you're going to get there. And it tends to you're going to get that crispness to it from the from the ice. But yeah, it's yeah, it's it it changes the profile completely. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I was surprised, I guess, because I don't think of water really as like a flavor, like a mixer would, you know, like tonic or cranberry juice or whatever. It's just, um, and so instantly, just a, you know, just a few seconds. I, I remember, I do remember one time this guy, I mean, just showing me like literally, like it was like two drops, like a little flick of just a few drops into a, a neat glass of whiskey. And I was amazed how much that changed the flavor. Like that just seemed to open it up, just that tiny bit of water. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty, uh, Interesting, just the, I guess, whatever chemical processes do that. Dan, uh, Amy Yakuboff wants to know, you're a comedian. Mm. She, that's a statement of fact. You are a comedian. Okay. Do you watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? I do not. I'm familiar with the show, and I'm familiar with the premise, and it does sound like a good show to me. I, I watch, I'm, I'm the worst this way. I, I watch very little comedy. Um... Usually I watch dramas. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking about comedy or I do a comedy podcast. But uh, the show I'm loving right now is actually Yellowstone, which is not it's not funny. Oh, I've never. Is that the Costner one? Yeah, the Costner one set in Bozeman, Montana. It's about like um, basically the locals who are the ranchers and he's the kingpin versus the Californians kind of coming in and changing Bozeman and making it more like, uh, I guess, uh, you know, a, a regular city with, you know, more amenities. But they want to keep it. It sounds boring. But really, it's like uh, The Sopranos, but it's ranchers. It's just like they're just gangsters. Do you spend much time? Because Montana's obviously right next to Idaho. Yeah. Do you spend much time there? Like Missoula? Do you come mm-hmm. over there? I, you know, early on, I, I did. There were these little bar runs like Missoula, Bozeman, uh, Butte, Billings, all that. Yeah, no, I did. I did a, I've done shows in all, all those little towns or in their uh, in colleges in those towns. But yeah, Montana's beautiful. This whole area is, is real, uh, real scenic. A lot, of, a lot of outdoorsy stuff. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, quick reminder, everybody, the contest to win the Flaviar membership is songs with hot in the title. You got about three minutes to get those entries in, hot in the title, get them in. Dan and I are going to pick a winner. You're going to win a Flaviar membership. Mm-hmm. Dan, I wrote a book called American Wino where I drove around the country. And awesome. after, after Walla Walla, Washington, I went through Idaho. Yeah. Which... People might be surprised to know this, but there's actually some good wine made in Idaho. There are a couple. There's a few. A couple. I don't even know. That. I'm not a big. I'm not a big wine kind of sir, but I didn't know that there really was a wine area of Idaho. I know about Walla Walla. You know, like, they make wine in every state in the United States. Every huh. state in the United States makes wine. But I guess what I was getting at is Montana, which I loved. So when I went through Montana, I ended up in Livingston, Montana. Okay. And it's it's such a beautiful place, but. It's different. I have to remind myself. Now, I grew up in Philly. I grew up in a tough neighborhood in Philly. So it's not like I'm, but I remember being in, in Livingston. Yeah. And I must have stuck out, you know, and I'm there and I'm sitting yeah. at a bar and it's Sunday night and I'm watching football and I'm tired, man. I've been on the road for seven weeks at this point. Sure. Driving. This guy walks in the bar and he's clearly been overserved. <laughs> yeah. The bar's empty. There's hardly anybody there. He walks in and he's like, and his bleary eyes somehow focus on me. Yeah. So he walks over and he sits right next to me. And there's nobody, you know. And I'm, oh boy, here it comes. Here we go. 
Here we, the hair on the back of my neck stands yep, up. You know? Yep. Yep. Oh, this isn't good. This is. Uh, what are you drinking? I was like, and I don't take my eyes off the screen. I'm like watching here. Go, Just having a whiskey, man. He goes, <laughs> you buy me one? Oh boy. Uh, it's like the day I went, why would I buy you a whiskey? Because I said so. Okay. Oh, uh, nuts. And, but this is the calculus that goes in your mind when you're in Idaho or Montana or whatever. You're like, the chances that he has a gun are high. <laughs> <laughs> it may be in his pickup truck. Oh, and yeah. Ford, and he is driving a pickup truck. And yep. he is driving. Okay. Yep. And I'm sitting there going, uh, I like turn. I'm like, man, come on. And then the bartender come up and saved me. He said, all right, Willie. Sure. How many times I got to tell you? So apparently, Willie, this is a regular thing, yeah. Willie. But, yeah. But uh, it's, it's an amazing part of the country up there. And uh, I, they're hardy folk. Yes. And, and, and they can be a little scary for like outsiders where it's funny because I've, you know, toured all over the country. I've, you know, been to Philly many times, been in like, uh, you know, downtown. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Yep. Downtown Philly, you know, after shows at Helium or the Punchline or whatever, like one, two in the morning. And, you know, like, yeah, like plenty of different places in America can be dangerous. For me personally, I get more anxious in a small town kind of dive bar than I do in any bar in any neighborhood in a city because maybe just from growing up in these, like a little town, man, there are people who just want to uh, beat up outsiders for sports. Oh, you know, man, just, like, oh, you're, oh, you're not my trip. When I yeah. did my trip, I drove my Toyota FJ Cruiser SUV, Japanese made vehicle, California plates. My friend was like, why don't you just put the rainbow flag on the back? And, you know, and because when you're going through these small towns in, in around the middle the of shit kicker America, I trust me, I'd be driving through. And I, when I saw the speed limit, do you get that? I'd be like, all right, let me slow it down. Yep. I'm like, I do not want to, I don't want any trouble, man. You'll get, you'll get beat up just out of boredom. They'll just, they're just like, they haven't had anything to do that week. And it's like, yeah, why don't we punch yeah. this out of towner? <laughs> I would then, I think, I think we have established that we like all of these whiskeys. Yes, yes. Are we allowed? Are we allowed to say favorites or no? Or or they, when they all are good? I, I I do like all of them. I I I do. I especially like A. I especially like the Star Wars, the, uh, the Australian. Australian I, I like all of them. But I was just um. That's, that's your one. Oh wow, that's that's my one. If I had to pick one, yeah. That's your jam. All right. I uh, I like them all, but I you know what I got to be honest too. I'm probably with you on the Star Wars. That's because I you know I've, again I've written about it. It's a really good whiskey. They're all great. Yes. Get the, uh, if you're out there, and again, that's what I'm telling you, join Flaviar, join it, be part of the club, and get the Asian Oceana Volume 3, uh, whatever we call it, tasting box. That's what it's called. <laughs> By the way, I, ref I do this every week. Yeah. And I think I intentionally screw up what these things are called because then, they, then we have our meetings during the week and they give me the notes. Dan, you did such a great job. But, but on the messaging, the messaging, yeah, I really want you to hit the certain. You know what? You know what? We'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> oh, my, my favorite feedback I've ever gotten this, this does crack me up. I say, you know, there's uh, obviously on the podcast, you can do whatever you want, but we have sponsors and okay. you know, they want certain language or whatever for their ads. <laughs> and this one sponsor who is a, they are a great sponsor, like a great product. They still sponsor the show. I do love them. These quip tooth toothbrushes. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would try to make my ads written in the flavor of the show. At first, when I started working on this ad agency, they're like, write it in the language of your show, do your sense of humor. Uh, they stopped telling me that because the show is pretty dark, pretty crazy in moments. And so I did this crazy ad where I just said like, um, Hey, you know, be sure to get this toothbrush. And just so you know, you know, because you listen to the show, they have your personal information and they know the R through the RSS feed, like they can, they know where you live, they know your address and they know who this ad goes out to. So if you don't order this in the next, you know, 24 hours, they're going to find your house. They're going to kick your fucking door down and they're going to beat your goddamn head in with a baseball bat until you, you know, <laughs> and so I got an email and they typed out the crazy stuff I said. 
and 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 they sent me this email and they just said um the sponsor the the <laughs> the company or whatever like that doesn't feel that this reflects their brand and and when you read it out of context it just like it looks like the rantings of a serial killer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the, way, the, the nuance of comedy often gets lost on the ad on the ad people yeah they don't yeah, get it yeah. very often. they're like yeah you know oh i trust me man i've got like manscaped is one of the uh oh, yeah. you know they're one of my advertisers and you know yeah. i joke around i'll be like you know you don't want to nick those so they'll have like very specific language about how it doesn't pinch your nuts when you're shaving right. your nuts right. and i'm like by the way I sometimes pinch my, I remember I said something like, I <laughs> I sometimes pinch my nuts, but it's a different, it's a different thing I'm doing, you know? And they're like, oh, no masturbation jokes. And I'm like, all right, fine. Hey, by the way, Amy, uh, Yabba, Fra Yabba Frank, who, Yab Yakubov, who also wrote about Mrs. Maisel. Oh, she said, we're, what's our second and third? So you went, mm. you went Star Wars is your first choice. What's your second choice? Well, okay, it's close. And I and at first I did not think okay on on the neat level with no ice, my second choice would be the Taiwanese the uh, Omar, but if you add ice, man uh, the uh, the the Fukano the C it's almost up there with A. Uh, yeah, I didn't prefer this one as much neat for me, but the flavor changed completely when I added ice and I really liked it. I think great Dan's think alike. So I agree with everything Dan said, Amy. So there you go. Uh, all right, now we're going to get to our contest. I'm just going to go through here, Dan. I'm going to throw some out. Okay. We'll, we'll go yes, no, yes, no, and then we'll whittle it down, and we'll get down to our winner. for the. So Sandy Abrams, these are the songs that have hot in the type. Right. The contest and is over now. Nobody, don't bother writing yeah. anymore because we're going now. Here we go. And the Van Sandy Halen, that was, the, that was one of the best. The Hot for Teacher, ah, oh, that one's already off the list. So she says, hot legs, Rod Stewart. Hot okay. legs. Okay. Hot Rod Lincoln. I don't know Hot Rod oh. Lincoln. Uh, uh, oh, man, it's, an, it's an old song, I think, from the uh, 60s or 70s. Something like, oh, it's like, drop that Hot Rod Lincoln. It's like he kind of talk sings. And Random Connection, the guy who wrote that song, lived in Spokane. Uh, a buddy of mine lived down the street from that guy. And he, he basically paid. Commander Cody. Yeah, Commander Cody. Yeah, that, that guy. Commander Cody, that's who that is. That's right, he, yeah. He bought a house and lived off the royalties of that one song, essentially, his whole life. Okay. Then there's Hot Great. Summer Night, which I'm thinking they mean Long Hot Summer Night, which is Jimi Hendrix, which is great. Oh. Okay, I, I'm sure if I heard it, I, I love Hendrix. Long I, Hot I, Summer I, Night is Jimi Hendrix. So that's Sandy Abrams. I like Sandy Abrams. All right, Hot okay. Legs, great song, Rod Stewart. You know, it's so Hot Legs. Yeah. And you're in the running. Okay. Uh, Cooper Brown, She Was Hot, Rolling Stones, Hot Dog, Led Zeppelin, love that. Ooh. Too Hot to Handle, UFO. Don't know that one. I don't know the one either, but man, Stones and Zeppelin in, this, in, in the group, that's powerful. I'm a, I'm a huge right, stone. R, yeah. R. Pay 57. Ooh. Hot Blooded by Foreigner. God, hot God, God. Blooded. Check it. Check it and see. I Where think it was fever. 103. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hot Every Child in the Sea. We're going to be able to sing that one. And Hot Stuff. Hot Stuff, baby. Donna Summer. Hot Stuff, baby. Oh, okay. Like see late 70s? Gotta have some hot stuff. Got to have okay. love tonight. Sorry. Yeah. Again, yes. middle-aged yes. white guys. All right. That one's good. Let's go down. Oh, Candy Power. Hot, Hot, Hot by Buster Poindexter. I... When you first brought it up, that's the one that popped up in my head first. So I'm okay. like, hot, hot, yeah. Hot Rod Lincoln, which we already went, and Hot to yeah. Trot by Hank Williams Jr. Okay, okay. Dang. I'm a Hank Williams Jr. fan. Sorry, Candy, you're out. Uh, all right, Candle Power. Uh, hot, oh, Julie T, Hot in the City by Billy Idol. Come on. Don't you know that it's hot in the city? Hot. In that's, the city that's, Billy tonight. Idol? that's Billy Idol. Yeah. I didn't know that song was Billy Idol. Hot Child in the City, Nick Gilbert. Love that one. Love that. And Hot, hot Child. Da -na 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 -na. Yeah. No, no, hot. No, Hot Child what? in the City, looking down and pretty. And then, uh, exactly. and then Hot Blooded by Foreigner. Julie T, you're in the running. Uh, oh, and then her honorable mention was It's Getting Hot in Here by Nelly. Okay, I, I'm not. I'm not and, a huge. 
It's Harvest getting is- hot in here. And show <laughs> your great chest hair. I am a great. Come on, Dan. Let's see your great chest hair. Come on. There it is. Oh, boy. Is it? Is it butt hair time? Is it butt hair oh, time? Oh boy. Oh all boy. Right, later. Or it's almost butt hair time. Uh, all right, let me jump through here. Ooh. James McHale coming in with Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg. Okay. Drop okay. It like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Hot in here, Nelly. And here comes the hot stepper. Ooh. I don't know that one. Here comes the hot stepper. Hold her up and on and on and word it up. Excuse me, Miss Yeah. Uh Eeny Camos or something like that. That's a good one. Trust okay, me on okay. this. Uh, ooh, Brian Hawk with Hot Thing by Prince. Hot okay. Blooded by Farner. And Some Like It Hot by Power Station. Some Like Man. It Hot. Dan. That might be, that that might be the best three. That might be the best three. Those are, those are all so pretty goddamn good. And Chris Buckley, Hot Dog by Led Zeppelin. And by yeah. the way, everybody must be loving my variation. So hot dog is it's the country song there. Oh, hot dog. It's on uh it's on In Through the Outdoor album. Uh Hot Stuff, Rolling Stones, and One Hot Minute by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ooh. That is a that's a good um yeah, it's, it's, that was was that the Dave Navarro album, I believe? Yeah. That he was on that one, yeah. Uh oh man, there's just so many. Owen Autry, Hot Corner by the B-52s. Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg. The Planet's on Fire by Sammy Hagar. Hot is not in there. Sorry. Uh, girl. Oh. Um, yeah, Claude Hooker with Hot Blooded, Hot Legs, and She Was Hot by the Stones. Uh, let's see. Any others that we're not getting? Hot Pants Explosion? Who's that? All right. I think we got it. Dan, I'm going to say that my finalists are this. Okay. We're going to pick Chris Buckley. Okay. With Hot Dog by Led Zeppelin, Hot Stuff by the Rolling Stones, yeah. and One Hot Minute by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, yeah. That's Chris Buckley, all right? Okay. Brian Hawk, Hot Thing, Hot Thing, love Prince. Hot Thing by Prince, Hot Blooded by Foreigner. Yeah. And Some Like It Hot by the Power Station. Damn, that's good. All right, so, and, and, and right, what was so it? of those two. What was his name? Brian Hawk. Brian, okay. I, I think of those two, I'm going Brian Hawk. That's the hot thing by Prince, hot blooded, and some like it hot. You? Some like it hot is such a class. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna fight right. you. Sorry, Brian. Chris Buckley, you're out. So now we got Brian Hawk. Let's see if there's anybody else you want to throw Brian Hawk up against. I say James McHale, man. Drop it like it's hot. Do you know the song? Drop it, Drop like, it like it's hot. hot. I think it's Snoop Dogg yeah. and Nelly. I think it's or no, uh, no, it's um, Pharrell. I think Pharrell mixed that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Drop okay. It I like can it's hear hot. It. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Hot in here by Nelly. It's getting yeah. hot in here. It, Take yeah. up and then here comes. You don't know. Here comes the hot stepper. Word it up, my no. man. Excuse me, Mr. Officer. Word it up. Oh, yeah. Here yeah, comes yeah, yeah. the hot stepper. Put it up. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's that's a, a jam, man. That's, that's a, good, a jam. Those are all fun songs. Those are all fun songs. Very so, different. This, so, Dan, this is what it comes down to between those two. Yeah. Are we into the classic, although he does throw Prince in there, Brian Hawk did throw Hot Thing by Prince, but are we into more like the classic rock, hot-blooded, some like it hot, or are we having a party and do we want to go you know, do we want to go with drop it like it's hot, hot in here, here comes a hot step. I, I'm more of like a classic rock guy, but in this situation, those are catchier songs. The, uh, right. the like it's hot, all that. I mean, for like for drinking, for having fun, those, those are catchy. Okay. So James McHale has now jumped in the lead. Now there could be one other challenger to James McHale. And I think that is going to be Julie T., Hot in the City by Billy Idol, which I love. Hot, hot in Child the- in the City by Nick Gilder. And Hot Blooded by Farner. I don't know the middle. I don't know the middle song. Uh, hot Child in the City. I oh, think it's. Yeah I, do. yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. And then. I think, yeah, man. I, think I mean, we got to go with James McHale. 
Yeah, they, they, yeah, they're very, they're very fun, catchy songs. I do love. I, I'm glad that I learned that was a Billy Idol song because I listened to him as a kid. For some reason, that just didn't sound to me like uh, the Vital Idol kind of album songs. I, I, I don't know who I thought that song was, but I didn't know that was uh, Billy Idol. By the way, if you're you're a Billy Idol fan, one of the most underrated MTV Unplugged albums of all time is Billy Idol Unplugged. Huh, I'll have to check that out. I don't think Billy's have... songs are going to work that way. No, he has a band. Sure. The Billy Idol MTV Unplugged album, amazing. Huh. Really is. I didn't even know he did one. He did one. Check it out. So James McHale, congratulations. You, yes, yes. You are part of the club, Flaviar, with the two Dans, and now you, and hundreds of thousands of other people. Yeah. Flaviar. Well, listen, Dan Cummins, I have to refer to you because sometimes I uh, think I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Dan, this has been a real pleasure, man. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dan. It's, yeah, it's fun to hang, man. I appreciate it. I learned so much. I, uh, I've i been drinking a long time, but not with any sophistication. So I, I, I uh, am very impressed by your, your knowledge of spirits. Well, thank you, man. I'm very impressed by your, your body of work. And so tell people, we got the podcasts. Throw them out there. How many are we with? Yeah, you, you can check out Time Suck. That's a solo deep dive, one topic a week, like cults, conspiracies, true crime, serial killers, that kind of thing. Or you can check out Scared to Death, which is paranormal kind of campfire horror stories that I uh, tell to my wife once a week and try and scare her. And then she shares fan stories with me. Super creepy stuff. And then a new one, Is We Dumb, which is just uh, making fun of uh, people doing dumb stuff online and making fun of ourselves, me and my co-host Joe, for just being idiots. And then comedy specials. Yeah, comedy specials. Uh, the, the recent one, Get Out of Here, Devil. That you can find on Amazon. There's another one called Don't Wake the Bear on there. And then a Spotify, Pandora, just a, a whole bunch of albums. And uh, I want to thank uh, everybody for jo- – oh, and also one other thing. Social media, where do they find you? Uh, just uh, Dan Cummins Comedy. If you just Google uh, – or just Google Dan Cummins, it'll all pop up. It'll all pop up. Um, well, next week on the show, we got actor Evan Jonakite. We're going to be drinking Smoke on the Water of Life tasting box. Smoke on the Water. That sounds – Sounds, sounds intense. Sounds really intense. You know and I jer- might have to have you on the side here to walk me through this. Um, <laughs> but really, man, it's been great. It's been great having you on the show. You. And uh, I want to thank everybody out there that's watching uh, for joining us tonight. Again, check me out. I'm at the Imbiber on Twitter. And what's the other thing called? Uh, Instagram. Facebook. Whiskey. <laughs> nice. That's it. Instagram. I'm on there. Instagram. Check out the latest episode of What We're Drinking. Dan Aykroyd is on there. Dan Aykroyd, come on. Legend. And uh, we'll see you next week. That's all I got. Goodbye, buddy.